All right, so in uh, this topic here, chapter four, we start in leveling theory. This is where we get to start understanding how we were able to establish elevations across the, uh, the whole United States or how elevations are, are, uh, are created and perpetuated and pushed forward to, um, to other locations. Uh, so the first thing we're going to get into is we're going to talk about some definitions. So this is representation, this picture here, pretty much everything we're going to be looking at and, and what I want to talk about here. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is this right here. So this is a vertical line. Vertical line is that which follows the uh, follows the gravity vector. Okay, we have a level surface. If you look right here, here's a level surface right there. You'll notice some uh, properties about that. So the definition of it, it's a curved surface that at every point is perpendicular to the local plumb line. Um, another way to define that level surface is also the equipotential surface. The potential of gravity um, is equal at every point along that line. So the big thing I want you to understand when we talk about level and, and, and everything is uh, level surface is curved, meaning it has the same elevation at every point. And it is perpendicular at every point to gravity. That's what a level surface is. Okay, so now we go uh, on to finding what a level line is. So if you're ever dealing leveling lines, well, it, obviously it falls within a level surface. So it's just a line and a level surface. And it too is curved. A uh, horizontal plane. If you look right here, that line there, that's our horizontal plane. A uh, horizontal plane then is a plane that's perpendicular to the local gravity vector. And this class and most of the stuff we do is done in a horizontal plane. Um, the, you know, a lot of the stuff we talk about is plane surveying. Uh, and that's, that's where we're going to be uh, dealing most of the stuff we, uh, we do throughout the class. But to, to get you to understand what, uh, what we're talking about, what's going on, this is a good, uh, good place to start and understand that we deal here, but the world also deals in level surfaces, level lines, not just a horizontal plane because we don't live in a flat world. So within that horizontal plane, we also have horizontal lines. Well, a horizontal line is actually one, again, that falls within a horizontal plane. All right, uh, next thing I want to talk about is a vertical datum. Vertical datum right here, what that represents is something that's telling you what your elevations are based on. So if I had a vertical datum and I said that this was zero elevation, that's just my base. So that means any point above here is going to have a certain distance, which gives then a certain elevation above what the datum is. Um, anyways, and so a good definition, though, to, to give you is any level surface to which elevations are referenced. So, uh, so again, more definitions as we, as we get through here and follow that. Um, elevation. Uh, so as I talked about the vertical datum, I also mentioned, uh, mentioned the word elevation, what we're talking about here. So all that is is a distance measured along the vertical line from a vertical datum to a point or an object. So simply put, here's a point right here, here's your datum. I'm going to go along the vertical line, whatever that distance is and whatever my reference datum point is, that is my elevation. A geoid, you see here it's also uh, you know, kind of along the same line as where the vertical datum is. The geoid, it's a particular level surface that serves as a datum for all elevations and also astronomical um, observations. Uh, and we'll get into some of this later, but uh, anyway, it's just another, uh, another, another level surface we can talk about. A benchmark, so on here I don't have a benchmark shown on you, but uh, good definition for a benchmark, it's an object, natural or artificial having a marked point whose elevation above or below a reference datum is known or assumed. So if I had a point right here, and what it does is it creates a very specific and known point. So that is my point. It has a specific distance above a vertical datum along a vertical line that is known. Um, and you're going to find benchmarks throughout anywhere you go. And what that does is establish elevations for anything else for new projects that you're doing. All right, uh, talk about leveling. What that is, is leveling is just a process of finding elevations of points, and I'll get into that here in, in just a sec. Vertical control, and what that represents is if I had one benchmark, again, a certain point, certain distance above the vertical datum, vertical control just creates multiples, multiple benchmarks that are known 
that have known elevations, known distances above a vertical datum. All right, so as we talk about these vertical datums, one thing I want to uh, help you understand is there were, there's actually two. NGVD 29 uh, is what started. That's the National Geo Geodetic Vertical Datum of 1929. So back in the day, they went through and did precise leveling techniques to establish all this vertical control across the United States. Uh, and everything was related back to mean sea level. And all that was done is measuring, you know, about 100,000 kilometers of leveling. That's a lot. That was a lot to do back then in, uh, in the early 1900s. And 1929 is when everything was finalized and done. Uh, now what you have is NAVD-88. Okay, that's the North American Vertical Datum of 1988. And again, these dates don't reference everything exact. Um, you know, in reality, I think it was 1991 when everything was finally finalized with the datum. But these are just the names that are taken uh, with it. Over time, we had a de deterioration of uh, NGVD-29, meaning that some of the data points, some of the elevations, the benchmarks were being lost. They were moving. They were not in the... Uh, just not reliable anymore. So they, they were deteriorated. So you couldn't rely upon them anymore. So what we did was, is there was an additional 650,000 kilometers of leveling done. So so now try and take all that extra leveling and wrap it all together and come up with a good adjustment of all these elevations. That's what we have. Big difference that we're going to talk about or see here is that uh, NAVD-88 is referenced to what they call Father Point. It's in uh, Quebec, Canada. We don't reference anything to mean sea level anymore, as as what was used to be done back in uh, back in 1929, all the way up until you know around the late 80s. And what happens is during this time, uh, we noticed that because uh, we were able to do more leveling and use uh, uh, you know better leveling techniques and everything, we we found changes of up to one and a half meters up in the Rocky Mountains. Now you think, well, that's not a big deal. You're right, maybe it's not, but Hey, if uh, if you're in a certain area and all of a sudden you're you know everything is referenced on some certain point and now you are telling it's a, it's a meter and a half off, that is quite a bit off. So to do this, the the, the general technique is what we use and call differential leveling. So if I had here a benchmark, the top of that uh, box right there is a benchmark had a known elevation, three twenty five point two zero feet, and what I want to do is I want to figure out what the elevation of this other one is. So you're going to figure, okay, well, how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing we do is we set up a level. Next thing is we uh, we have a level uh, level rod. So you put the level rod on there. You set up the instrument, and what this level does is it measures horizontal lines. So when I do this, what I have now here is I have what we call a backside. So wherever your benchmark is or wherever you're um, taking the elevation from to be able to establish it to a new point, is what we call our backside. So this point here is what we're going to call our backside. All right, and I measure. You see right here as you measure up the rod. Now it, uh, we're measuring at 3.6 feet, 3.60 feet. Okay, great. So now what you do is you now know what the elevation of your instrument is. And what I mean that is I'm not talking what the elevation or height of the instrument uh, above here to the ground. You know wherever that uh, wherever that point may be. We're not referencing that. We're strictly talking with the, the level line, what we just measured, what elevation that is. So we knew an elevation here at 325.20. We went up as we measured up the, uh, up the rod to a horizontal line. And uh, so we measured that at 3.60 3 feet. So you just add that to the benchmark and you end up with what your elevation of that horizontal line is. So by doing so, what we can do now, let's move the rod over to the next position and take a measurement over there. And now we have a measurement and we're trying to get down to this place. So what are you going to do? Well then you can subtract that distance which you get. So in doing so now we can compute them with the elevation is. That's how we determine what, uh, um, what the elevation is, what's considered to be differential leveling. Set up some horizontal line in between two points that you're trying to figure out and now you can give uh, calculate that. So the things to be known is the back sight. Anytime you read a back sight, a back sight is always a plus. And every time you have a foresight, the foresights are minus. So what I mean is, if you look back when we took the, the measurement on the rod over here, right? we added that to the benchmark, transferred that elevation over to the rod, 
on our foresight over to this location, and then you subtract the foresight to get down to what your elevation is.